Hello, and thank you for tuning into Answers from the Lab, where we share Mayo Clinic knowledge and advancements on the state of testing and science from laboratory leaders and the people who are making it happen behind the scenes. I'm Dr. Bobby Pritt, the Chair of the Division of Clinical Microbiology in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Here today with me is Dr. Ellie Thiel, the Laboratory Director of the Infectious Diseases Serology Laboratory at Mayo Clinic. Now, Dr. Thiel, you may recall, she's been a guest on this podcast several times now. She led the efforts to evaluate and implement the antibody tests for COVID-19 that we use in our laboratory and are available through Mayo Clinic Laboratories for physicians and patients across the United States. So she is here with us today to give us an update on COVID-19 and antibody testing. Ellie, thank you for being here with us today. Thanks, Bobby. Happy to be here. So maybe we can start with a basic question. Um, can you start by refreshing our memories on what antibody testing is? Sure. So antibody tests really are looking for one component of our immune system. They're looking for the humoral immune response to an infection. Um, so really kind of looking for that B cell immune response, right? They're not really looking for um, cellular immune responses. And there's really no um, assays that have been developed to look at that. There's a lot of methods that are being used on the research side. There's only one um, T cell receptor sequencing um, assay that's uh, had or that has FDA EUA at this point. So all of the antibody tests out there that have FDA um, uh, emergency use authorization are really targeting that humoral immune response. Um, and so that, uh, that has advantages and limitations, right? It takes still about 10-ish days on average to detect antibodies. Um, so we still can't use it as acute measures of infection. Um, and depending on the assay, uh, you can have antibodies detected for uh, many months after um, infection or vaccination, um, or it, it can be shorter. So there's some sensitivity issues still that we're dealing with. Um, but uh, yeah, we've looked at a lot of assays, uh, antibody assays up to this point, and we've really settled on two that we're using at Mayo. One to look at antibodies to the spike protein, which will be positive after infection or vaccination. And then the second assay is looking for antibodies to the nucleocapsid protein, which will only be positive after infection. Okay, so lots of good points there. I'll just take a step back for the listeners who uh, maybe haven't thought about this for a while. It's amazing that antibody is and serologic testing are now part of our uh, vocabulary. Um, so antibody testing is really just looking at that one part of our immune system, the humoral or humoral uh, immune system, but not the cellular immune response, as you mentioned. But of course, we have both parts when we're exposed to COVID-19, and they both help in protection. So measuring that one part, the part that we can easily measure, the humoral uh, immunity. So uh, we have these two different tests. Can you tell us how we would use those? How would it, why would a physician order them? And uh, yeah, in what circumstances would we want to perform this testing? Sure, so um, one of the most common reasons to order it is really uh, to look at past infection, prior infection. Um, so in that case, the nucleocapsid antibody test uh, would, be, would be ordered. Um, we also have a lot of individuals that, um, are looking to get tested after vaccination using the spike antibody test. And, you know, I, I understand it, right? We, we put something in our bodies, we wanna know if we reacted to it, if we have mounted an, an immune response to that vaccine. Um, the problem is that we, you know, you're probably gonna be positive, but that's all we can say, right? We can't actually say, oh, you have protective immunity for 10 to 12 months. Um, there's, there's no recommendation from the CDC, WHO, or anybody else that, for that matter to do antibody testing after vaccination uh, because we still don't really have that um, correlate of protection or threshold of uh, protective immunity that's been identified yet. Uh, so yes, testing is being done after vaccination, but there's really no recommendation to do that at this point. So a couple important points there then. After you get vaccinated, in general, there is really no indication that you should get a test to see if the vaccine took. Um, 
And of course, the vaccine is generating an immune response to the spike protein. So that's why we would potentially, if we did want to test, we would want the antibody that detects the antibodies. Uh, we would want the test that detects the antibodies to the spike protein. Mm -hmm. But I guess going back to that initial point, though, in general, and correct me if I'm wrong, there is no indication for most people to test after vaccination. There isn't. So we know because from the clinical trials, we know that pretty much every single person mounted a strong immune response. And granted, this is otherwise healthy individuals. We also know from um, a lot of studies that if you're immunocompromised, if your humoral immune system in particular is not functioning well, you, chances are you're going to be seronegative, meaning you will not have developed an immune response. Um, and so in, in those cases, if you, if you already know that you're immunosuppressed, you're going to most likely be recommended to continue um, with uh, safety measures like masking and avoiding crowded, um, you know, in, uh, enclosed environments. So again, the, the, what is the role? What, what clinical decision point are you going to make based on that antibody test result after vaccination? I think is pretty minimal at this point. Well, that makes sense. And you also, of course, brought up that point that it takes our body a while after vaccination or natural infection to produce mm -hmm. antibodies that are detectable. So it's not good for detecting someone who's acutely ill. They're in that stage where they actually have symptoms or they're um, infectious to others. This is something you would do later on in infection to test if the person actually had been infected right. or vaccinated. Right. That's right. Um... Okay, well, my last question then for you has to do with this new study that the CDC came out with, looking at the level of immunity provided in uh, by unvaccinated, naturally infected individuals versus fully vaccinated individuals. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so it was it was an interesting uh, study published. I think it was last week, and they uh, compared the or they looked at the risk of hospitalization in two different. Uh, populations. One group was previously infected, unvaccinated individuals, and infection um, occurred anywhere from 90 to 170 days uh, before hospitalization. And the second group was in previously uninfected but fully vaccinated uh, individuals. And again, uh, the vaccination occurred 90 to about 170 days. Uh, before their hospitalization. So looking at these two groups, they looked at what the risk was of testing positive for COVID after hospitalization. And they found that it was about a six-fold higher risk that you were going to be COVID positive if you were previously infected versus if you were previously vaccinated. So the, the bottom line here is that even though, yes, we do get uh, natural immunity after um, being infected with COVID, I think we all can agree on that. Uh, the, the, the key point is that vaccination seems to provide a higher level of immunity and protection against hospitalization versus natural infection. Um, so that really argues to the point that even if you were infected previously, you should strongly consider and you're strongly encouraged to get vaccinated. Um, and that vaccine is really going to basically boost your immune response um, from that prior infection. So uh, it, was a, it was a really intriguing study, uh, well done uh, across multiple states and in different hospital systems. So I, I'd encourage the viewers to, to, to read that if they want more information. Yeah, thanks, Ellie. I think those are important points. We're now at a point where uh, eligibility for vaccination is opening up for children, um, where we have boosters that are available. We have third doses for immunocompromised patients. Um, according to the CDC data, we now have across the country in people ages 12 and older, 78.8% of people who have received at least one, uh, one dose of their vaccine. So we still have a ways to go. I think it's good to really talk about what vaccination gives you. And it really is that additional layer of protection. Even if you've been infected, this is just great data to show that getting vaccinated um, is still an important thing to do. And in looking at the CDC COVID tracker data, 
at our community transmission across the United States, it's still high. It's at the highest level um, for almost every state in the United States. Um, we spoke last week that, you know, hopefully we're reaching that plateau and that it'll go down from here, but it's hard to predict. And of course, we have other respiratory viruses coming up, influenza being one of them. So getting your COVID vaccine and your flu vaccine would be an important thing to do at this time. Yeah, definitely. You know, now is, now is the time to kind of uh, get immunized so that you minimize any potential transmissions during the upcoming holiday season when we get together with family and, and with friends. Um, so, you know, this first week, second week of November is really a great time to get vaccinated and have that full protective immunity uh, into Thanksgiving and Christmas. Great point. Well, thanks again, Ellie, for all of the excellent information um, and the updates on antibody testing and vaccination. Um, and I'm sure we'll have you join us again uh, in the future, although hopefully by then COVID will have uh, gone down substantially. Maybe we'll even be out of the pandemic, we'll see. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in to Answers from the Lab. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to tune in every Thursday and every other Tuesday. <music>